The key to finding great long-term investments early is understanding products, not just profits. Real growth happens when a market adopts new innovations, and profits show you how well they're doing over time. Well, CES just wrapped up, and there are tons of awesome innovations that investors need to know about. A couple of them even use AI. AI generated by AI. AI made a generative AI model. AI application. A generative AI. AI, as we say. AI everywhere. AI everywhere. AI is the future of computing. So in this episode, I'll show you some of the most exciting and actually useful products that came out of CES and what they could mean for our favorite tech stocks going forward. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to keep you hostage. The three big technology trends and the associated stocks that I'm going to cover are one, AI assistance, two, spatial computing, and three, hybrid AI and the AI PC. I think all three of these trends are going to be a big deal because they'll fundamentally change the way we interact with technology at work, at home, and on the go. And new technologies usually mean new opportunities to make great long-term investments, like Google with the search engine or Apple with the smartphone. Today, AI assistants are looking to take market share away from search engines and smartphones by reducing the time and the number of actions that it takes to get things done. As an example, let's take a look at the Rabbit R1. I'm not saying this specific device will kill the search engine or the smartphone, but I cut together two quick clips from Rabbit's keynote to show you just how much simpler using a computer could be thanks to generative AI. First, here's Rabbit's founder and CEO explaining the current state of smartphones and other smart devices when you actually step back and look at how we use them today. Hi everyone, my name is Jesse and I'm the founder and CEO of Rabbit. I'm so excited to be here today to present you two things we've been working on. A revolutionary new foundation model and a groundbreaking consumer mobile device powered by it. Our mission is to create the simplest computer, something so intuitive that you don't need to learn how to use it. The best way to achieve this is to break away from app-based operating system currently used by smartphones. Each time you want to do something, you fumble through multiple pages and folders to find the app you want to use, and there are always endless buttons that you need to click. Add to the cart, go to the next page, check the boxes, and jumping back and forth, and so on. The smartphone was supposed to be intuitive, but with hundreds of apps on your phone today that don't work together, it no longer is. If you look at the top of ranking apps on app stores today, you'll find that most of them focus on entertainment. Our smartphones has become the best device to kill time instead of saving them. Many people before us have tried to build a simpler and more intuitive computers with AI a decade ago. Companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon made Siri, Contana, and Alexa with these smart speakers. Often, they either don't know what you're talking about or fail to accomplish the tasks we ask for. Recent achievements in large language models, however, or LLMs, a type of AI technology, have made it much easier for machines to understand you. However, where these assistants struggle is still getting things done. If you go to the ChatGPT and use their Expedia plugin to book a ticket, it can suggest options, but ultimately cannot assist you in completing the booking process from start to finish. Think about the way we use Google. You type in a question, or if you're really savvy, you enter a few keywords that you think will return what you're looking for. But what Google actually gives you is hundreds of search results that you need to either manually sift through or refine your search until one of the top results looks like what you're looking for. And hopefully it isn't out of date. Generative AI agents like ChatGPT and Bard have already made a lot of progress in shortening the digital distance between questions and answers. But finding what you're looking for is just the beginning. After that, you're probably opening different apps or websites and manually entering information to do things like order food or make reservations, book lodging and transportation, make a purchase, or simply share what you found with friends and family across many different messaging apps. You actually can have ChatGPT do some of these things for you today with different versions from OpenAI's new GPT store, which just opened last week. But good luck entering a prompt to book a plane ticket and then trusting it instead of babysitting it every step of the way. I have to admit that I was so impressed with how the Rabbit R1 tries to solve this problem that I pre-ordered one on the spot. Let me show you why. We must go beyond a piece of complex software. We want it to be in the hands of everyone. So we first set out to fundamentally understand how computer apps are structured and more importantly, 
how humans interact with them. These applications share something in common, the interface. They all have a user interface. If we can make an AI trigger actions on any kind of interface, just like a human would, we will solve the problem. This insight led us to create the large action model. With the large action model, we fundamentally find a solution to the challenges that apps, APIs, or agents face. We solve it with interfaces, regardless of which platform they're running on. In short, the large language model understands what you say, but the large action model gets things done. Finally, we can build a computer that in addition to understanding what you're trying to say, can actually help you do things on your behalf. This is the Rabbit R1. Designing collaboration with Teenage Engineering, the R1 is a fully standalone device, primarily driven by natural language. What's the stock price of Coca-Cola? Searching for the stock price of Coca-Cola. The stock price of Coca-Cola, KO, is $59.76. Let's see how the large action model works. With LAM, Rabbit R1 can interact with all kinds of applications. Get me a ride from my office to home now. Of course, I will book an Uber ride for you from your office to your home. Please confirm the ride. I have six people with three luggages. Find me an Uber that can fit all of us. For six people and three pieces of luggage, I recommend booking an Uber XL, as it provides ample space for all passengers and luggage. Please confirm the ride. The ride shows up. I just hit confirm. The Uber's on my way. I recently made a video about my top 10 stocks for 2024, and the last company on the list was UiPath. UiPath uses different kinds of AI, like computer vision and natural language processing, to help people create automations for work, like finding and pushing buttons on a web page, even if that web page's layout changed over time, or crawling through emails in different formats, recognizing certain pieces of data, and entering that data into other applications. At a high level, Rabbit built a device and an operating system that uses generative AI to do these same things. The global generative AI market is expected to more than 8x in size over the next eight years, which is a compound annual growth rate of over 31% through 2032. And a good chunk of that growth is going to come from software and services that try to streamline the way we use computers to search for information and to act on it. The question isn't if these changes will happen. The only question is which companies are going to make these changes. Will Google and Apple streamline their own user experiences, or will companies like UiPath and Rabbit end up disrupting them? Either way, what I'm looking for as an investor is which companies are leveraging AI to minimize the number of steps that it takes to do the fundamental tasks we all do already, like searching and shopping. The bigger the change, the bigger the opportunity. Right now, one obvious stock is Microsoft, because they're adding GPT-based co-pilots to Windows and every Office application, which will reduce the need for users to leave the app in search of answers. Another solid play on this trend is Google. Despite their blunders during recent demos, Google has kept up with OpenAI. Not only is Gemini a very capable multimodal model that benchmarks well against GPT-4, but Google also has Android. So they could make an AI assistant mode that would let Android users interact with their devices like they would with a Rabbit R1. And I'm sure that Apple isn't standing by either. It wouldn't surprise me if they built a new wearable device that uses vision and natural language to control an iPhone, or a new standalone device altogether. Which brings me right into the second trend, and this one really surprised me. Apple recently announced that their Vision Pro headset will come out in just a few weeks. Whenever Apple makes a device for another market, that market takes off as businesses build products and services for a new frontier of the Apple ecosystem. The surprise was how many different mixed reality glasses and headsets were showcased at CES specifically as competitors to the Vision Pro already. Let's start with Sony's headset, which they just announced as a spatial content creation system for engineers and designers. Unlike the Vision Pro, which has a dial to gradually shift between virtual and physical environments, the Sony headset comes with a flip-up visor to simply switch between them. And where Apple's headset relies only on gesture controls, Sony's comes with a pointer for aiming and clicking with one hand, and a small ring for pinching and zooming with the other. It's also the first spatial computing system to be powered by the latest generation of Snapdragon XR2 chips from Qualcomm. Spatial computing is going to be very useful for a wide variety of industrial applications, ranging from working with 3D designs in 3D space 
to practicing complex or high-risk scenarios like knee surgeries in an easy to reset and retry way. Another pair of mixed reality glasses that were showcased at CES is the Xreal Air 2 Ultras. You just connect them to your phone or your laptop and your apps will open on individual virtual screens. Then you use simple gesture controls to interact with them as well as adjust their size, shape, and position depending on your physical environment. I think these will be awesome for people who travel a lot but want to use multiple monitors, myself included. But it's not just about ditching physical displays. The Nemo is being sold as the world's first standalone spatial computer for productivity. The whole thing is roughly the size of a headphone case and runs apps like Excel, TradingView, and your favorite internet browser, which means tons of people will be able to ditch their laptops as well. You just connect it to any augmented reality headset and a wireless mouse via Bluetooth, and that's it. You can even ditch the mouse altogether because Nemo has a built-in trackpad and can be used as a gesture controller and pointer. The last VR device I want to bring to your attention is the Ultra Reality Monitor by Braylon. Instead of recreating a monitor-sized display on a pair of glasses, the Ultra Reality Monitor recreates a 120-inch display inside a regular desktop monitor. Usually, the way to increase the resolution of a screen is to add more pixels, but you really only notice the extra resolution on bigger screens, and not many people want to sit directly in front of a massive TV all day every day. So Braylon uses VR to solve that problem by giving you a massive virtual display with a wide 122 degree field of view right inside a 32 inch display. Braylon is currently selling these monitors mostly to the defense industry, but I wouldn't be surprised to see all kinds of businesses adopt this technology over time. I know I'd love one of these bad boys for video editing specifically. While a lot of these devices are still prototypes, I think it's pretty clear that augmented and virtual reality are no longer just gimmicks to sell video games. In fact, the global mixed reality market is expected to 17x between now and 2032, which would be a whopping 43% compound annual growth rate for the next eight years in a row. Obviously, the stocks to watch in this area right now are Meta Platforms and Apple, which already have giant software ecosystems for spatial computing. Another interesting investment in this area would be METV, the Round Hill Ball Metaverse and Spatial Computing ETF. Apple and Meta Platforms sit near the top of this fund, as well as companies like Roblox, Microsoft, Sony, and Autodesk, all of which have services, software, or hardware products that benefit from the adoption of spatial computing. I often search through thematic funds like this to find new and innovative companies that I want to research early. This fund also includes companies that make the chips for spatial computing like NVIDIA and Qualcomm, which brings me right into the third technology trend I want to cover from CES, and that's the AI PC. Where generative AI assistants shrink the number of steps involved in computing, and mixed reality shrinks the physical space that computers take up in the first place, the AI PC is about getting more out of the same devices and form factors that we already use today. I talk about AI PCs a lot, and AI chips are a big theme in my investments. But let me quickly highlight some of the trends that I saw from NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm at CES. First, the next generation of processors will come with dedicated cores for AI processing. For example, AMD's Ryzen 8000 G-Series will have built-in NPUs, or neural processing units. Our computers already do a lot of AI processing today, like ray tracing and DLSS for video games, adaptive noise suppression in microphones, and blurring backgrounds during video calls. If you add in AI co-pilots from Microsoft, GPTs from OpenAI, and generative tools for creators like Adobe Firefly or Wonder Studio, you can see the clear need for PC processors that are dedicated to AI workloads. Second, more and more software will use generative AI, even if only in the background. NVIDIA showed an updated demo of Ace, their avatar cloud engine that can generate actions and dialogue for different characters. Let's listen in as these two AI game characters have a generated conversation. Nova, you ever get that uncanny feeling we're like those AI constructs from the old sci-fi flicks? But nah, we're too quirky for that. The cool thing is, the conversation's different every time. Quirky is one word for it, Jin. I think we're just too real to be anything but flesh and blood. You're not wrong, Jin. Sometimes I wonder if we're all just part of some elaborate cybernetic dream. If we were AIs, I'd be the one cracking jokes about the singularity over a bowl of ramen. While it's still pretty basic today, there's no question that we will be watching movies and shows, 
listening to music, and playing video games where different pieces were generated by AI. And by the end of the decade, we probably won't be able to tell them apart from their human-crafted counterparts. And third, the world is shifting towards hybrid computing. As chips and edge devices get better and better at inference, they'll push fewer workloads to the cloud. And when the workload does get too big for your laptop, your smartphone, or your self-driving car to process in a reasonable time frame, only the chunks that need the extra resources will get sent over to the cloud for processing. As the line between the cloud and the edge continues to blur, it's going to be more important for investors to track hardware, software, and services for data centers as well as end consumers. Don't worry, I'll be here to break down the relevant consumer products as well, like NVIDIA's new GeForce RTX 40 Super Series GPUs, AMD's competing Radeon GPUs, and the accelerators that they're integrating into their Ryzen processors, Intel's upcoming Arrow Lake CPUs for AI desktops, and Lunar Lake CPUs for AI laptops, and Qualcomm's huge line of chips that power everything, from Samsung's flagship phones and Microsoft Surface Pro laptops, to some of the new AI and mixed reality devices that I highlighted in this video. AI is changing technology faster and faster, and with those changes come new and exciting investing opportunities. That's why it's so important to understand the science behind the stocks. So if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That really helps me out and it lets me know to put out more content like this. This video is a great one to watch next and you can sign up to get my AI research and my stock picks before I turn them into videos right here. Either way, thanks for watching and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.